Did I have one of those too? Yeah. Awesome. We've got this. Oh, yeah. 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 Welcome, everybody. How is everyone? Good. Good. Great. Awesome. Wonderful. So uh, today we're largely covering WordPress, um, but I think some of this will relate to other platforms, and, and you'll be able to take some of this experience to other platforms. Uh, basically. Uh, WordPress is a popular free open source blogging system, but it's actually extended to be, become a full content management system. It, it really started in the blogging community, and what that, that sort of means to us is that it was the original social media. So before there was Facebook, before there was anything else, there was blogging and commenting on blogging. And then uh, you know they basically created these technologies where the blogs would start to communicate with other blogs and lead people from blog to another. And so that's part of the reason why WordPress is such a strong uh, software is because it, it does have a system of uh, connecting blogs. So it does draw together blogs. When, when you publish, you, uh, you have the options to send out pingbacks and trackbacks, which actually go find other blogs uh, that have similar content. And then they, they basically communicate with one another and say, hey, you've got some keywords, you've got some subjects that you know, are similar to what this blog just posted, do you want to post a backlink to it? Uh, and so that's kind of an advanced topic that we will uh, possibly cover a little bit later. But the, uh, the point of uh, content management systems is, is basically uh, having websites that have database-driven content. And what, what that basically means is that uh, when we first started websites in the 90s or whatever, uh, you know, websites were static HTML, and what that meant was the only way people saw that content was the way the designer delivered that content. Soon, we, we started to realize that users have their own way to basically uh, you know, find out content on the website. And so with the introduction of database-driven websites, the content became, became stored in the databases. Uh, and so basically, uh, WordPress is a collection of scripts, like most content management systems, it does store in the MySQL or NODB database system. So there's a couple of different databases you can use on your server. Uh, we're going we're gonna to fork here, and we're going to talk about two sides of WordPress. Um, there's basically what you guys are going to probably end up playing with here in the workshop, and that's uh, WordPress hosted at WordPress.com. And so that's a free service at WordPress.com where you can basically create a website that will be like dansockwriter.wordpress.com, and you can do that at wordpress.com without having to set up your own server, without having to do any of the configuration of software. So it's a pretty immediate and available thing that um, I'm not sure if your computers are open to wordpress.com, but you could go through the process, and we'll get to that in a little bit, of actually uh, 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 creating a, a website at wordpress.com. Now, WordPress.org is this other place where WordPress hosts their software where people can download it and install it. And then they also host uh, tens of thousands of themes, tens of thousands of plugins. And so you, you with WordPress.com or what's known as WordPress hosted, uh, you get themes, but you don't get plugins. Themes are how the website's uh, uh, basically the rules of how the website displays. Uh, so a theme controls uh, the CSS, the cascading style sheets, that are all the rules of how a website displays. On the other hand, um, you don't get plugins at WordPress.com. And plugins are community-created open source pieces of software that execute inside of the WordPress content management system. So they add tons of functionality. Uh, at right now, there's probably about 40,000 free plugins in the, the WordPress uh, repository, um, and, and probably 20,000 outside of the WordPress uh, repository. 
So you don't get those with WordPress.com hosted, and that can be pretty powerful stuff because those could be anything from e-commerce to slideshows to form systems that help you create interactions with uh, with the community. So again, WordPress.com, you, you choose a path that's a little bit easier, but you don't get as robust the, the software as they've actually rolled out. So to go back to uh, content management systems and database-driven uh, content, Basically, what you're enabling with a, with a database-driven website is your users to find content in the ways that they would search for it. So if they came to your site and saw you had some categories that interested them, they could basically search out those categories and see a list of all content related to those categories, which more or less allows them to uh, experience what content you have on your website uh, in the ways that they would search for that content on your website or, or find what they were actually interested in on your content rather than just what you present. And so that's that's a little bit of the history of database-driven websites. Uh, coming from the blogging community, uh, bloggers love to write. And so you know what you quickly have with bloggers is people that sometimes write five posts a day. Uh, so you quickly, uh, you know, you have a lot of bloggers that quickly bury content or just move through adding new content, and so that's where having this database-driven uh, feature helps people you know, actually find the content that they're looking for. And then, like I said earlier, there's the pingbacks and the trackbacks where the blogs talk to each other and try to link up uh, related content across the internet. So um, that's, that's a little bit of the history of WordPress. Um, allows bloggers to choose themes and add plugins to their sites, so we'll cover that. Um, so it, it's actually advanced to full-fledged content management system, even though it was rooted in uh, blogging. So blogging really enabled people to have their own social media sites where they would blog about the issues that they wanted to, and then other bloggers could read those uh, blog posts and comment on them. But content management's a little bit different. That's where you start to control every square inch of your website, and you start to have uh, the ability to, to paint whatever sort of website you wanted to. So uh, as WordPress grew, um, they found that, um, that, that um, a majority of the marketplace was starting to shift towards needing content management features, and so they, they worked to evolve WordPress out of just the blogging realm and into the realm of actually being uh, a robust enough platform to host any type of website on. And so uh, at WordPress.org, there's there's, which is not .com, there's a showcase and you can see some of the top corporate clients that use uh, WordPress and there's things like Coca-Cola and New York Times. And, and so you find that this free open source platform uh, is actually robust enough that corporations are using it in mass. Uh, and, and there's thousands upon thousands of, of uh, corporate users. At this point, there's over 300 million downloads of, uh, of the self-hosted WordPress software. So. You can imagine that there's probably over three or four hundred million websites running on WordPress right now, which makes it the number one platform in the world, the most popular platform. Uh, there's some pros and cons to that. Uh, the, the, the pros of using the number one software is that it's the most large, it's the largest community in the world. So you have more support than you might have with some of the other platforms such as Joomla or Concrete 5 or Drupal. Um, and, and, and you know, there's all these new proprietary softwares popping up, like Wix and Weebly and site builders. Um, but those don't really offer communities of support, and they don't really offer open source. Uh, so I just want to talk about that for a minute. Open source is basically a licensing system. Um, it, it, it references a little bit more than what the, the licensing references. It references almost a lifestyle of uh, you know collaboration, sharing. Um, holding the space that, that this is uh, code that is in the commons and belongs to everybody, and so open source as a uh, open source as, as a, a choice for developing platforms means that uh, that code is always available for anybody to modify. You can track the progress of the development of that code. Um, so open source has a standard that says that anybody can freely modify that code. Um, anybody has access to it, nobody owns that code, it belongs in the commons. And that's a pretty powerful concept. To me, WordPress is sort of like the printing press, 
was in Martin Luther's time, I would say WordPress is, is sort of like that to the internet. So it's almost like, um, you know, it, it, it's not in its infancy anymore. It's, you know, going on 15 years now or 10 years now, 10, 15 years of WordPress. And I would say that WordPress is sort of like the, the internet printing press. It's that revolutionary. Again, because it's on open source, because it's grown to be the number one used platform. Uh, like I said, there's about 40,000 um, plugins in the plugin directory, and the plugin directory uh, that, that's basically sub software that you can add to your WordPress self hosted uh, website that adds functionality to it. Um, so that's a, a brief history of WordPress. I'm just going to review again there's WordPress.com where you host with them. There's WordPress.org that is the, the, the repository of all the open source software for you to host on your own server. Um, and then there's just tons of information, knowledge base, um, you know, a whole uh, codex, as they call it, of uh, how to use functions in WordPress, how to program it, how it was programmed, how to you know, all those, how to develop plugins, how to develop themes. Um, so there's this robust community that's been there for years. Uh, actually doing the work to, to develop themes, advance uh, WordPress, and, and keep it as popular as it is. Uh, some of the cons with being the most popular system in the world is that you're also uh, targeted for, for more traffic, for more spam traffic. So there's a huge amount of bots, as they call them, um, that are doing things like spam comments, creating spam users, and so that's a you know a drawback of, of having the most popular system, but that is a, a reality for basically all of the top content management systems. There's just uh, in, in all seriousness, there's a real world of, of malicious and spam traffic out there, and uh, uh, they say that the internet that we're aware of is, is about 10 percent of the total internet out there. So you do have to be careful. Getting out there in the internet, um, and, and, and I would say, you know, learning about what makes a site safe, keeping your site safe, and, and some of those things are important things to do. So, you know, you do have some some um, some ethics involved when you, you make a website uh, to keep it safe so it doesn't get hacked and start spamming the world with a spam mail. Uh, there are things you can do to, to cover that, and we might get into some of that later, but. Uh, basically, um, before we get into actually working with WordPress, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, um, kind of the, the basics of, of why having a website and what do you do with a website. Um, I, I would imagine some of you probably have some business ideas that you wanted to do with a website, and uh, my, my point is, um, when you start to think about building a website, you need to sort of identify your mission. And so, what is your mission? Are you just working to blog? Are you building a personal business? Are you, uh, you know, blogging about a, a, a nonprofit cause that you're, you're passionate about? All of the above. I mean, is your blog going to try to catch, catch all? Too? Well, what are some uses for websites that are effective? Just, just the start the brains moving here. Like, what, what are some of the things that you can do with it, or what occurs to you all? I mean, you obviously have some interests, so probably have some thoughts as to uh, what can be achieved. Anybody? Mark, what's, what, what are you thinking about? What, I know you're a web developer, so you probably have a lot of different things to Well, um, this is probably not a really good use of the internet, but there's an online game called um, Pirate Size of Fortune. Mm -hmm. right, it's a, a role-playing game. Um, and lots of different um, alliances have websites to, to track what you've done before, what are some fat targets to adapt, stuff like that, and um, what are places to avoid. So the particular um, called Brother of the Army doesn't have a website. Okay, so you could you could blog about that game and more well, or less. More or less, I've got to have information like, like um, I set it up now so, so that you could right click and, and put something in my clipboard, right? Mm -hmm. And that clipboard goes straight to my site or will, and then um, give information about that particular um, location, right? Okay. So, like, this is the location, don't mess with that. Or somebody else in this brother, in our brotherhood has, has basically owns that, that kind of thing. 
Well, you're, you're queuing me uh, later on. I'll talk about site users with WordPress, so you can possibly have multiple blog writers. You know, so you can potentially have multiple contributors. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to, to, to tell people how to how to play the. I'm talking about information, yeah. right? So it, it, it's basically a war game, right? Yeah. So, or information. Um, <laughs> if, if, if forums were something you're interested in, we could get into some forum stuff later on too. Anybody else? Uh, Nina, I know you're not really WordPress, but but yours is, is a business, right? So yours right. is. Um, do you do you have any interest um, in adding kind of the blogging side of things to your? I do, and I, I wasn't sure how to do that when my Google comes to a site, or if that's even possible. So this is something interesting. Okay. I love the blog. Okay, um, and, and I wanted to talk about that for a second. What the importance of blogging is, because at this point you have. Uh, all these brand names, corporations, and they all have blogs. So everybody has blogs these days. Why have a blog? Um, and, and, and more or less, the reasons to have a blog is because if you're a business, you may attract you know traffic to your website when they want to find out about your business. So you're not really that's what's called a, a, a billboard static website. That's basically a website that just advertises your services, has your contact information, has the about page. And so that's a static website. There's not much of a reason for somebody to, to go to that website unless they know they are looking for you. And that's what makes it difficult because you know you, you get these notions in your head that you're going to form a website and inherently traffic's just going to come find you out. Uh, in business, they often say that your website should only really produce about 10% of your business. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of the reality. So why blog? Well, blogging is where you put new content on your website and you give people new reasons to keep coming back. And so, you know, that could be, if, if you are in a business, you could be blogging about, you know, general things in the industry that you, industry, plural industries that you work in. Uh, so, you know, blogging is your ability to sort of stop advertising and just do uh, what you do in your, your trade, and that is maybe discuss what happens in your trade, um, maybe even, you know, in private practice, uh, you might, uh, you know, blog about things that interest you, and that might be significantly interesting to people that wouldn't be interested in your business. Um, so, you know, with video gaming, um, you, might, you might blog about new features. You know, you might uh, run through uh, blog posts about new features in the game. If they roll them out, a new update comes out. You might discuss what some of those new things are that, that come out that, that release or whatever. Um, what are some other uses for blogs? Um, is, is anybody else interested in talking about what their, their interest is? And maybe like community building, but maybe that's similar to a forum. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's. I mean. Uh, Blogs are a great way to like build voice. They build, I mean, for people to get to know you, if you're just approaching this kind of static page, right? That's where people can kind of get an idea of your values, of personality, of the organization, individual, and it's actually, you know, whatever you're using the website for. So it's definitely, and then of course, getting it interactive, you know, you have services like Tumblr.com, where it's like the micro blog, where it's just blogs, very efficient, super easy to plug in. So that people can share those very easily. You know, another thing that with blogs, if you're sharing interesting information, you have, you know, a Facebook share on there, you have a Twitter share on there, you have Pinterest, whatever. Uh, so getting people to throw it into other social media, which social media is essentially distribution channels for your website, which is kind of like the home base where you store all of your all of your content. Uh, a big thing that we've been talking about in these workshops in general is like the fourth or fifth one that we've done, we've done some Twitter stuff, some websites. This is the idea of don't trust social media to for your everything you're doing. It's like you're in an apartment, you know, with a bad landlord, you might change the rules, change the rent at any second. And having your own website is a bit more like having your own house where you you manage it. The rules aren't gonna suddenly change. I mean some of the Google listing stuff changes, they're just gonna do that, but uh, it's a space you control, and I think people kind of get that, that idea. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to stay broad enough that this doesn't just have to be about WordPress, but obviously we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate this in WordPress. Um, so yeah, identifying your mission, 
And you know that mission can change. That's kind of the beauty of blogging. I wanted to, to speak to what you said about community building and how I said that blogging was the original social media. And so when you write a blog post, you would leave the comments on or you would let people, you know, create a usership with your site so they can comment. And that's that's kind of you know the original community builders, people would write these these beautiful blog posts that they spent a lot of time and energy and, and were really passionate about, and then people would comment and, and even though there's that whole spam traffic kind of thing out there, what you really find is people that were really highly engaging on issues. And, and, and so when a writer would write about you know, a, a certain blog topic, they'd attract with those pingbacks, they'd attract all sorts of other bloggers that are interested in that sort of topic. And so before there was Instagram, you know, before there was sharing visually, there was blog posts where you could have your images in the blog posts, you could have your words and images, you could even have a bit of video, whatever, and you know, you would attract people that were uh, really interested in, in those kinds of topics and they would actually interact with you through the comment system. So a lot of, uh, most websites that use blogs probably do have the comments turned on, and those are features that you can turn on or off. Um, we can talk about forums down the road when we get into some of the advanced features of WordPress. Forums are a great way to, uh, you know, sort of create interaction on your website. Um, you know, some websites that want to get big enough to be forums can keep their forums private if they don't really want to be searched by the internet. Um, so, yeah, identifying your mission, that's a big part of why you form a website. Um, but then if you're just a, a recreational blogger, um, you know, you don't really have to hone in on what your mission is because that's the beauty of blogging. You can blog about this at this time, this at that time. But it is uh, important to identify your mission, whether it's in a blog post or in the overall site design, because that's going to help you hone in on who you're trying to reach, and that is how to target your audience. Uh, and so there's things that you can do to target your audience, and then there's things that you can do to reach new audience that potentially shares those interests. Um, so in targeting your audience, maybe you're, you're, if you're in a business, then you're, you're working to you know, figure out who's actually interested in the products and services that you sell. And so that's where you know, we're not going to stay too focused on identifying your mission or targeting your audience. I just wanted to mention it because you know, that's kind of core to creating a website. So you're going to you know, more or less hone in on who's actually interested in your products and services. And then the part that you can do besides putting that, that information, that link in front of people, sending them business cards, whatever, that go to drive traffic back to the website, is actually loading your website with keywords and things like that to, uh, to attract that kind of Google search, that kind of attention. Sam? Okay. Um, so, so yeah, in targeting your audience, you know, in identifying your mission, you, you really hone in on who your potential audience is then you learn to target your audience, and then is how you actually reach your audience. Some of that in the internet is, is like I just said, the keywords, uh, actually a large part of it's keywords. So when you put the right keywords into your website, when people are searching for those keywords, they find you. Uh, so most content management systems, most website builder systems out there have some sort of way besides just in content to load your site with keywords. Um, there's also penalties for overstuffing your website with keywords. Uh, the way that Google tries to, to make it with their algorithms for their search engines is they want organic content. So they don't want you just loading your website with things to attract people, every possible keyword. They want you to kind of narrowly focus on what you actually do and what your products and services are and how to attract those specific audiences. Um, WordPress is a great platform for search engine optimization. It's, it's very uh, functional in that respect, so it does a wonderful job of actually uh, getting your content to the internet. Um, again, that's, that's because it was rooted in the blogging community. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, you, you, you want to use the right keywords in your website. There's all sorts of tools. Maybe another workshop will actually spend some time on SEO. So yeah, actually, you know, let's dive into that a little bit because, like, for example, so like having organic content, what does that mean? So instead of just throwing a bunch of keywords on to say you upload a photo onto your site, maybe you write a sentence about that that includes some of those keywords. Which, if we want to jump into just a little bit of a demo, maybe showing adding adding media to a post or something like that, uh, and then we can show them that what we're talking. 
Okay. Uh, what are, What are we looking at here? Uh, did you want to get into content now? Yeah, let's let's start doing that, and we can talk about okay. some of these concepts. That we so, where is this at right now? Is this so we just pulled up a test website. Um, if you all want to follow along, you can either just watch, or if you want to play with some of the functionality on your computers, I know I help some of you bring up uh, our test. You can see the instructions there on the left side of the screen. Um, I can't read the, the web website, the URL. Uh, this is WordPress.com. Right, I saw that one. The, 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 the one straight in front of me, that one, the website we're talking about. This is Go WordPress. No, no, you just need to look at the instructions on your left. I'm going to go to WordPress.com, and that's what you're going to put in. Use well, I get it. I don't have the same screen. That I have this instead of that. Yeah, I think this is a setup screen. I think that this is. So, yeah. I think I might have gone one step further. So you click on my site in the top left corner. Okay, cover in that. Thanks. You should, yeah, we didn't even do that. So I just go to my, my site? Yeah, top left corner, you hit my site, and that brings you to this panel. Uh, and then we're going to go one step further right into WP admin. Uh, you can maximize that. Okay, is, is everybody good with the, the Word document? Everybody in WordPress.com? Um, okay, so yeah, this is WP Admin, what I'm hovering over, and let's just open that up. Uh, we've got ourselves a, a website for everybody to use today. Michael? Did you have a question? Yeah, we'll that. Okay. So we're going to WP Admin now? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll save the space. Let's do a little bit of the new cap. Uh, it's going to just, I just created this test site. If you wanted to set up your own and start playing with that, um, and, and we're going to move forward. What, what Xander just said is if anybody actually wants their own website to take home, we can we can backtrack and you can sign out and just create a, an account at WordPress.com if anybody would like to. What's the question? If we were to do that, you said that WordPress is free. Is the hosting free also? WordPress.com is free, so you can post uh, Nina at WordPress or Nina.wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to self-host, then you do have the cost of the domain, you do have the cost of hosting. Okay, but you could host for free technically if you do it the first way. The first right. way, correct. Okay. At WordPress.com, that's 100 percent free. If you want to spend money with them, they will actually let you take a domain name and resolve it so it's actually Nina my website.com or something. Or my website.com. You know. Got it. How was that $15 to be able to do CSS? Um, the CSS part we'll get to in a little bit. Right. Just, I, I'm not sure what the WordPress charges are, but they do let you buy a domain name. If you wanted to host with them, then you wouldn't have hosting. You can still buy a domain name and resolve it um, so that if you know my website actually works when it's really mywebsite.wordpress.com. Um, so anyway, before we move, start moving into content, was there anybody that actually wanted to go back and set up their own WordPress instead of just the test one that they belong in? Maybe based on one other question. Okay. Um, so I want to keep my site because it has a domain that I like, but uh -huh. I don't have a blog function on that site. Yeah. So if I wanted to maybe start my own here, is it possible to just like connect my blog that way, or do you think that's not really worth it? Is no, I, I think it's just another website page load, honestly. Um, okay. So, you know, you may grow to like WordPress uh, enough when you, you feel a little bit more that, that you understand it, that you might move the Google site to it later. But in the meantime, you could just put a link up in the menu system and just link out to another website. Uh, I, I'm not completely familiar how to put links in Google sites, mind you. Right. I can't really help you out with that, but okay. that, that would be a totally a thing that you could do, even if you couldn't figure out how to put it up in the menu bar, you could put right. it then anywhere else. Well, there could be an auto-redirect also, where you just automatically go to, to okay. a different site. Okay, but I'm interested. Okay, um, maybe go back on what looks like this page and just, um, the sign out button is uh, people yeah. so, well, I loaded something, but um, <laughs> here it is sign out right there. So, what we're gonna do this, or are we gonna do this one? Oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna do this one. She's gonna set it through. I think we can set it through a little bit better. Okay, let's see if we can set it. This will be really easy to set up. Yeah, follow along on the test site or if you're willing to set up. 
Peter, yeah, are you, uh, do you do you want to do that? And just let us know when you're you're to this point. You know, when you're logged back. In the I just take the name of my site address, and then I'll be with you guys. Okay. Do you want to just start describing the differences of those pages? Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about the history of blogging, um, and, and and that basically is posts. You know what what is blogging? Blogging is blog posts. What are posts? Well, posts are a lot of things. You, you guys who are familiar with Facebook and Twitter, uh, you know, those are technically posts. Um, so, so all the, the news feed on Facebook, those are all actually posts. The tweets on Twitter are called micro posts. Um, micro tweets, whatever, micro posts, limit a certain number of characters. But the idea is that there, you have this, this content holder, this content type, that allows you to do some things that you wouldn't normally do on your static pages. And that's, you know, have your data organized by categories and tags. Um, you know, on Twitter, you've got the hashtag, which helps people find your content by that specific hashtag. Well, WordPress always had categories and tags. I'm just going to pull up that screen here on the post. Um, so we'll just look at a post. Uh, so, so basically, pages and posts, we're starting to get into to WordPress content at this point. Um, I, I want to walk you guys, before I get too deep into the content, I want to walk you guys through this dashboard. So actually before I start with the pages and posts, I'm going I'm to backpedal a little bit and just start with the dashboard. Uh, so what you see over here is, this is called the dashboard menu. This is, this is what it looks like at WordPress.com. When you use Selfos, it doesn't necessarily look exactly like this. You get some other apps in here that you don't see. Um, so yeah, this is the dashboard. There's a bunch of things that uh, you know are pretty exclusive to hosting with WordPress. So you actually get a premium service. Um, Act is met. This is a spam fighter. When you host with WordPress.com, you get that for free, I believe. Uh, you, you can track the blogs to follow. You can have multiple blogs at WordPress.com for free. You have a function that's kind of like Google Analytics that cites stats, and those are stats of visitors provided by WordPress.com. Um, this is new. I, I, I haven't done WordPress.com in a while because I'm, I'm a web designer, so I, I self-host everything. So I'm not too familiar with store, what store is, so I think we're going to leave out store for today. But the things that we are going to cover is pretty much everything else down this line. Posts, there we are, posts, media, links, pages, comments, feedback, appearance, users, and then here's some of the setup stuff that you might use. We might not talk about links too much, um, but we will cover just about everything else. Um, we'll, we'll probably leave about links and uh, feedback. I'm not really clear what feedback is either. Um, so basically, you have uh, you have a, a, a variety of content types, but the two primary content types before we talk about custom post types, because we don't really need to get into that today, is pages and posts. And so pages are, are basically static content. That's where you're going to put your, your pages that show up in your menu system. So for this particular blog, he set up an about page. Uh, and, and that's really, again, going to be a static page. When you look at uh, editing a page or a post, you're going to see almost the exact same thing. We'll cover what some of the differences are here in just a second. But this is what you see when you edit, um, when, you, when you choose edit in the pages menu. So we're editing the about page, as you can see right here, editing the about page. Uh, fundamentally, the difference between pages and posts are there's actually a post page which holds many blog posts, whereas a page does not hold blog posts. It is just a static page. So a post is like a page, but then there's a blog post page that is your blog page that holds multiple blog posts. Yes? I was going to ask a question for Nina. Is she's already got a site someplace else. Uh -huh. That means she can post that site onto WordPress? Yes. I mean, you, you could, we'll, we'll, cover, we'll cover menus, and you could basically put a link out to your actual site you know, in your menu system here, too. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that um, down here. Sorry to interrupt, but how did you pull up that? Um, that uh, menu on the left. Um, just the entire WP thing. admin, or you might have to hit my site in the top left corner. My this site. 
And then there's WP admin. Uh, down the left, WP admin. Uh, let's see where. There it is, right oh, there. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So what do we? Do? It's my side. You left out edit page, and so I found that. And then you. You left out new page, so if you do stuff like go to new page, you just should tell us you're doing. Right, you're sorry, doing. yeah, Xander was minding the controls there. Um, so you're, you're where we're at, right? You've got edit a page. Um, no, I went to new page. Because or new page. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. That's a new page. We probably shouldn't all be on the same pages anyway. So. I edit yeah, so you have, probably have to create a page before you can edit it. So yeah, if you're in WP admin, just go to pages and then add new. Add new, yeah, exactly. I think that other combination of that about the page. Xander, while you're right there, I want to show you guys there's a few different things that show up when you hover over this. There's the full blown edit, which takes you into the page. Go ahead and click quick edit for us. This is where you get to do some, some things like turn on or off the comments. And there's also configuring a site so you don't, so, so that the comments are just on or off for new content in general. Right now on this, this fresh WordPress, comments are turned on, so all new content will have comments turned on. Well, this is the place that you can turn off those comments. Under the quick edit menu, so I'll do a cancel, standard, um, and then just hover, there's quick edit. Quick edit is where you can turn on or off the comments on your content. Um, if, if, if you guys would like to follow that train of thought, we could go ahead and go to where you, you could disable comments for your whole site if you'd like to do that. Um, what would be the purpose of disabling comments? Well, you might not want spam traffic. Um, you might not want to deal with spam traffic on your about page. You might not want to deal with spam comments. So on the new content oh, that you create for your website. So let's do that. Xander, can you go to settings, discussion? It's going to be just settings, discussion. Um, right here is where you can turn off comments. So they would be by default turned off for all new content that you create on your website. And while we're here, if you scroll down a little bit, Xander, Another thing that I would recommend doing is this right here. Users must be registered and logged in to comment. That will force everybody to actually have an account with your website before the comment can be posted. That's really nice for building your email list and just you know getting to like know the people who are visiting your website and starting to form relationships with them. Is there a way that you, no comment can be on your site until you screen it out? First? Yes. Um, email me whenever, uh, go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. Here's another one that you want to check right here. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. And then you just want to bounce in if you would. Um, the save button's going to be at the bottom of the screen. And before we get to the save button, you may want to choose this right here, Gravatar. Um, I tend to choose that. You have these options. This is what uh, people's profile pictures, logos look like. Well, Gravatar is a feature that some people in, in, in the WordPress community actually have. So if you set up your Gravatar picture, it will work on all WordPress websites. So you know this is a service that, that WordPress has created. If you go to the Gravatar website and actually set up a profile picture, it will work on all WordPress websites that you, you know, create a usership with. Is there a login through Facebook or login through Twitter? No, there is not an inherent login, but when you created a WordPress.com account, you can make a login through WordPress to your website that's a one click. So we'll probably get to that. I think, Sandra, you might know better than I, um, <coughs> some of the Jetpack features, are they in this, the WordPress.com posted? We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Nonetheless, uh, Mark, I'll cover some of that stuff. I'm not sure we'll get to demonstrate it on this WordPress.com hosted website. <coughs> Self-host, you get a lot more functionality. I'm not sure we're going to get all that functionality. But there is a single sign-on button that when you self-host, you can get. And then you don't have to log in. You don't have to type. You can just be signed into WordPress.com, click log into your website, and it logs you in because you're already logged into WordPress.com. So I'm not sure that we'll get to do that on uh, WordPress.com, but nonetheless, 
These are your common options. Again, the stuff that I tend to turn off would be allow people to post comments and new articles. This so, would, if you had a blog, this would disable people from commenting on your too, correct? It would. It would. Um, but that would be the default. That would be the default. So I tend to turn that off and then turn on comments on a per page or per post basis. Because you know when you're when you're thinking about website design, you want to design where your interactions actually happen. You don't necessarily want to just have every possible place be an interaction. So that's that's kind of why I would default turn it off because I'll I'll forget. I'll make some new page and I'll forget the comments are on, and then you know all of a sudden I'm having to deal with spam comments on on you know um, a, a services page or something like that. So, so I tend to turn that off. I, I make sure to um, turn this on. Comment must be manually approved, and then the, the other one is. Users must be registered and logged in to comment. Um, you only have to set this once, but it's important to know how to do it and to know where those settings are. Um, so this again was under settings, discussion. When we're all set and done with that, Xander, if you get to the bottom and just save it. Okay. So that's that setting. Um, Another thing you might want to do while we're configuring the website, if you just started, is go to the general tab. You might want to change your time zone if you intend to be in Indianapolis to UTC minus five, and that is our actual time zone, which you know would then make all the stuff that happens on your website actually be in the time zone you're familiar with. It's not showing. We have to refresh for it to show the correct time in. Yeah, I don't think that's a dynamic time pull. I think that's just on page load because it's just demonstrating to you what that. Uh, this is UTC time. This is UTC minus five. I can't make it show the UTC that I set. Right, so I change it to UTC minus five, and it still shows. You know, there's actually something here that I've not used that's kind of um, important, and, and I'll talk about why that's important. But you can set a logo to your to your website, not you know. So so this is a place where you can set a logo to your website right there. Uh, if we had one, we could we could you know upload that right there. And the, the reason that's kind of important is because what WordPress is, besides your own web hosting platform, is a social media network in and of itself. And I know that's kind of a confusing thought. You're like, well, we're talking about my website. Well, WordPress has connected all of its users. And so uh, basically, uh, where you upload that logo uh, is, is a way where when WordPress it has users interact with your website or your content, in its social media network, which we'll talk about at some point, um, then your logo would actually show up as, as your blog logo. So um, that'll be back under when we get to back to the WordPress reader. Um, so now we're going to just keep going on with content. Um, so we, we, we've kind of looked at pages. Do you want to go back to pages maybe? And we'll just finish looking at pages and look at the editor. Um, so anybody that's uh, you guys can edit a page or whatever. Xander's going to create a new page, I think. Or you can. Okay. You can add new for a keyword or you can drop down if you wish to continue to keep it. Can I add a page now? Yeah, go ahead and add a page just because we probably all can't be in the same page working at the same time. No. We're going to where? Uh, pages and add new. So we should have the name for the new page, that way we have all different things. Sure, that's good. One of, the, one of the newer features of WordPress that's pretty interesting is that there's actually autosave going on. So uh, WordPress is working to save your content no matter what, even if the internet connection uh, terminates. It's still working to save your content right up to the second the internet connection terminates. Um, so, 
So, okay, this is your, your editor right here, and there's a few things I want to show you about the editor. Xander, if you would uh, toggle this button right here. Does everybody see this button when you hover over it again? Toggle toolbar. Will everybody click the toggle toolbar button? What you see is uh, a whole new row of features uh, for formatting text. So, you know, this looks a little bit like Microsoft Word. Uh, there's bold, uh, italic, strike through, uh, unordered lists, ordered lists, uh, quotes, you know, alignment, hyperlink, um, underline, justify, font color. So there's quite a few, uh, quite a few options there. This right here, these are different, uh, these are different um, font tags. So you have headings, and, and basically your theme is going to dis tell the, 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 the software how to display things. So we'll get back to that. Um, so this is where you have the paragraph tag, the heading tags. So uh, what's important about heading tags is that uh, they help search engines identify your prioritizing of content. So you often put heading tags in to describe a paragraph. So your heading tag, you know, might be something like um, today at the library, and then you know your paragraph is we learned about WordPress 101, and you know, so your content would be a paragraph tag, but the, the heading to that section is actually going to be a heading tag. Uh, and so search engines sort of read content and they read the headings, and that sort of tells them what the content is about. So headings are really actually pretty important in, in terms of um, not only users understanding what your website's about, but search engines understanding what your website's about. Is there a text tab, there's code, is that HTML code you're talking about? It is, it's HTML and JavaScript, so that's where you can edit the code. Um, you know, for most users, I wouldn't get into that because that could get pretty confusing. You know, what is HTML, how do you use it? But the idea is, HTML is basically wrapping content in tags that tells it how to display, right? So that's what this is doing. This, this visual editor is wrapping the content that he, he typed, and now you know there's HTML on the outsides of this content that says display that sentence. H1. H1, exactly. Heading one tag. So that's what this tiny editor, that's what it's called. It's called a tiny MCD. That's the brand name of this editor. This, this visual editor is basically doing the work of coding the HTML for you. So you have a, a semi-visual means to uh, writing HTML, so you don't have to type the HTML. That's, that's basically what it's doing. But should you have a problem, should you want to do something more advanced, should you have a web designer, Xander will switch to that text tab that, that Mark was talking about right there. You can see your HTML. So there's a heading two tag. There's an HTML character, um, you know, there's the unordered list, there's the list items. So that is your HTML right there, there's your hyperlink tags. Uh, so that, that's what the HTML side looks like. If that's, you know, overwhelming to anybody, then don't use it. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's really there for the people that, that need the code or need to adjust the code. Um, you know, someone working with the visual editor can be frustrating at times, sometimes you try different styling things and it's going to leave excess tags or leftover tags in the code. So that's where you might need the text editor to, to modify your tags. Um, yeah. Um, you know, all this stuff isn't necessarily there with a self-hosted WordPress. I don't think it is. No, WordPress.com hosted. Oh. Yeah, so these things these three are features of hosting at WordPress.com that you're not necessarily going to get when you host it yourself. Um, so so I can drop files anywhere to upload. Are you in the Add Media? Is that where you're? Yeah. Okay. So let's click on that. Add Media. This is a robust app called the Media Library, um, and it's definitely grown in functionality over the years. So if you wanted to select file, you can upload, and you can see what your, your upload limitations were. Uh, you know, you have a file size of one gigabyte. Um, you know, so Xander just dragged. It does support drag and drop, which is really nice. Over here, 
Uh, you have the actual URL where the, the image is on the server. You have the ability to add some good SEO, some keywords here. You know, I choose. I, I tend to choose to mean, meaningfully describe my content here. So, if this is an indie art media co-op uh, logo, <laughs> I, I would probably do that. I'd probably describe it as that. And then Xander, if you would go ahead and put that in the alt text, I want to talk about what alt text is and why you should use it. Alt text is an attribute that goes into the HTML that helps people who are blind or, or visually impaired uh, with their digital readers interpret what that content is. So if you're visually impaired and you're looking at a website through a reader, meaning an audio reader that's reading the website to you, you don't see what an image is. So this is actually for um, accessibility. This is for equal accessibility. This is so people, this alt tag is really important. So that's, that's where uh, you know, visually impaired or, or whatnot, people uh, who use alternate forms of viewing the internet are going to get the description of what that, that content is. Um, you can do captions and descriptions. If you did a caption, it's actually going to show text over the photo or below the photo. I usually don't do captions. Um, description is just for your own use in the back end of the website to help you understand what, what that media is. You can give you control of it. Okay. And just introduce your own. Um, so you have a variety of media types that you can actually upload to the media library. You can upload um, all image file types. That's probably uh, JPEGs. TIFFs, uh, BMPs, uh, PNGs. Uh, is that is really? I think you can upload a BMP. It's from the wildflower file type. There's JPEGs, there's PNG. Okay. Let's go back to upload and see what you're seeing. Okay, so here's the allowed file types right here. So there's several document file types doc, PowerPoint. Uh, you know, the newer doc file formats from uh, Microsoft Office 2010 and beyond. Was there a um, Photoshop file? Uh, I don't know if it's PSD would be Photoshop. There's PDF. Um, I'm not sure. Those are X, Excel, Excel spreadsheets. Um, so basically, this is where you're going to upload images, but you can also upload docs and documents. And, and the document upload would be important because you can put a link into your website to the document that you've uploaded. So that gives you the ability to share a PDF uh, if you had something like a PDF that you can share. Um, so yeah, we're back here in the select files. You know, if I go back to the media library, we've uploaded this one photo. Um, Xander, do you want to show a few things? Before you just insert the page, we have this ability to create a gallery as well. We had a dozen photos up here. We could choose five and create a gallery. And the gallery would potentially put those in as either columns, or there's a few other options um, for galleries and things like that that you can put them in as. But the point is, galleries will put in multiple images, whereas just insert media will put in that image. So you have insert media, you have create gallery, and then you can even set this image as the featured image for the content. Um, which is important because you know if you if this was a blog post you might want a featured image with this. So everywhere it went on the internet, it had a featured image that went with it. So, so you can put a, a link to that image, that image in that the screen you just had before. To that screen, you can put a link to that image. Yes. Um, if back here on insert a page. If 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 you just click insert a page. Oh, there's one more thing before. Yeah, before, before you click that. Oh, okay, that's it. We'll, we'll, okay. Um, click that again. There's one more thing that I wanted to show. Two more things. If you'll scroll down here. So, so we had the URL. We talked about the accessibility with the alt text, possibly the description for your own use. Well, here's two or three more really important things. You have the ability to choose predefined classes, which tell uh, the image how to align. So you have three or four alignment classes, align left, align center, align right, or align none. Um, align none would apply no alignment to it. Align center would center the image in your content. Align left would actually let text content align to the 
left of the image, align right would allow text content to align to the right of the image. So that allows text to wrap your images, um, which is kind of important classes. The other thing is you have this link to, and right now WordPress inherently is going to put this image in as a hype, uh, as a, uh, a display that you can click on. So it's going to show the image, but you're going to be able to click on it and see a bigger version of the image. You can also have that image link out to another website. So Xander, if you do custom, then you can actually put uh, a, a different URL. So if you wanted this image to link out to another website or something like that via button, then you can put that put in that custom URL. Um, down here, Xander showed us that we have the sizing feature. So when you upload an image to WordPress, it uploads uh, and creates three or four different, uh, maybe even five different sizes, depending how big the graphic actually is. You can see here that the original size was 500 by 500. WordPress automatically also created the 300 by 300 and the thumbnail, which will always be at 150 by 150. Some of these other sizes change based on what your graphic size, original size actually is. But there you have a few different sizes that you can put in uh, from the different images that are created on your image upload. So just be mindful when you upload images, you are creating three or four other copies of different sizes of that one image that you upload. You can also change the size in the post. So. Are you hearing correctly that PDFs can be uploaded in the player? This is just mainly. So, right. is it an appropriate place? Like, if I have like an intake form and it's filled out, mm -hmm. is that? Okay? Yep, that's exactly right. And what it's going to do is, when you upload it, the file is hosted on the server, on the web server, but then you just put a link out to it. That's basically what you do. So, you don't actually see the file, right. it's just a link. Um, whereas an image, you see the image. Can you insert forms that also? Okay. Yeah. Does it have to be a link that's also online somewhere where the form is. Like, what if I just have the form on Word? Uh, you could have uh, the Word doc, and then um, if you wanted, you could uh, you could have a, you could have your email address. I don't recommend them doing this. You could have your email address public, so people could just respond or reply to your email address with the form attached. With, I'm sorry, with the, with the Word document attached. Okay. Um, well, the easier way is you could do it through either Google Forms that they'll send your answers straight to an Excel sheet, um, or you can use one of these contact form builders right in the, the WordPress site, which these are all, you can edit these to do whatever. I don't know if there's a lot of functionality in these. Not much. This comes with uh, WordPress.com. You don't get this when you self-host, but there's a million better options. Um, this is a form system. Uh, it's good to use form systems because they, they hide your email address. You don't want to put your email address on the internet because you will get spammed. You'll get signed up for you know spam lists. Um, and so that's why it's better to hide your email address through forms and let people contact you that way. Um, Question? Yeah. How easy, you know, because because of the spam situation, how easy? I, I assume it's pretty easy to change the email address on this. Uh, your email address is external to the website. That's you set up Google or Gmail. I'm saying, I'm saying when you set up with WordPress. Uh huh. Okay. Let's say, like I did, I just did one. Okay. Okay. And I decided that, but I use my common email address. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And now but I know, I, I know, I want to set it up for another email sure. address later. Okay. Um, okay. Because of the spam issue. Xander, if you would go down to users over here on the, on the left and open in the new tab, your profile, my profile. Um, so here is under users, you have my profile, and this is your user profile where you can, use, you know, your username was set when you set up the account, but here's your public email, so you can change your email address there, and then there's also another place. Uh, at least with most. Um, so yeah, on your profile, this is where you know you would set your email address. It was just down below this. Um, there was public email. This is. I also want to say, Xander, under settings, um, this is where your admin email general. Uh, this is where your admin email address is going to be. Uh, there should be an admin email address at the bottom. 
but maybe they don't do that on WordPress.com, so I'm okay, I'm mistaken. Um, so yeah, you, you set your email address. I guess with WordPress.com, uh, the reality would probably be you change your email address up here under your account settings. Oh, yeah. Can you get like an email through WordPress, or how would people contact you like if you didn't put your email on there? Um, if you the, wanted them to like for a business. The the contact form would be a great way to okay. do that. Um, I, I would go with the contact. If you're staying with hosting with WordPress.com, you'll have this functionality. You could add the contact form and so um, this will go to your email that you have associated with the site, which to answer your question about where you would change that the account settings is I assume maybe your profile that you have here is where in uh, so you go to like a little bubble head. And, and before you close this, uh, right here on this page, see this tab right here, email notifications? This is where you put your email address that you want to be notified. So let's say you set up a new Gmail just for this form, because you wanted it to go somewhere else other than where all your email goes. This is where you can set a different email address to your profile. Um, so that's, yeah, and, and I would recommend, I, as somebody who has, I spent probably an hour a day fighting spam mail because I've been signed up because I have money on this public mail website. I would recommend not going that route. Do not put your email address public. If you do put your email address public on a website, do something like remove the at symbol, you know, make it so the bots can't just discover your email address, you know. Do my email address and then literally type out the word at gmail.com or something like that. Um, just a technical trick if you did have to, you know, so you don't put the symbol in there because the bots actually scan websites for content such as email addresses. And, uh, what support do you have for mobile users or users of different screen sizes? Xander, Xander's showing you what I'm talking about, but you can't actually do that here in this video. Right, right, right. Yeah, just, I was just a Mark, sorry, what did you say? Um, support for um, different screen sizes and resolutions, specifically mobile users. We'll get to all that. Um, that's going to come with your theme. So we need to do some work probably, uh, especially if you guys are setting up your websites. Um, you can link to a different theme if you detect that the screen size is smaller. Well, uh, you would probably choose one theme um, until you're self-hosting WordPress. While well, you're at WordPress.com, you're kind of limited. You're going to have one theme, but they do have a mobile theme in, in their plugins. I'm just not sure, since I'm not completely familiar with WordPress.com. Um, Xander, what, what do we have under? If you can't dynamically link to it, then to me it's not very useful. Here it is, mobile. So let's go to mobile, and this is probably some mobile options. So. Enable mobile theme, if we click yes, this is what you get with WordPress.com's inherent theme. You get a mobile responsive theme. Um, and, and, and so, you know, there's a few options here. Oh, show posts on the front page. Show excerpts on the front page. That means just a truncated blog post. Show featured images on the front page. Turn off custom header. Um, and then, what's, what's all the way down there? That's just more talk of the... Uh, uh, that so, what, what was your point when you saw this? Well, I, mean, I guess it is dynamically going to this these mobile settings when the, when the media tab says that, that it's mobile, but if correct. it doesn't see uh -huh. doesn't see mobile, then it will not use these settings. That's correct. That's okay. correct. And I I can't rig it up to the projector, but there's a WordPress mobile app, and that WordPress mobile app will actually disregard how your website appears anyway and just display your content in white with a white background in a responsive way. So the WordPress mobile app, which connects everybody's WordPress, uh, is actually something that, that um, does the job of just removing the theme the way you've chosen to display your website and just draw your content and display it instantly. So there's that too, but we, we probably won't cover that. And we, we might talk about that a little bit more later. I know that was a little bit confusing. The WordPress mobile app is intended to be an app for all WordPress users and not just one website, which is really nice that they've done that for us. So we'll talk about that later with extending WordPress. But let's, uh, since we're going to post really quick. Yep. Yep. 
So you saw the editor for pages. Now let's go to a post. And if everybody wants to add new, add a new post. I want to show you a little bit of what's different about posts and pages. Again, you're going to put all your posts into a page of posts, whereas the pages were just static pages. They're your billboard pages, they're your contact page, your about page, your services. But posts, this is your dynamic content. This is where you're attracting people to your website because you're writing about new things on a regular basis. Um, this is where we get into the deeper blogging. We'll cover some of the things that we didn't cover um, earlier, and that is, um, so we've seen this editor, we've seen some of these features above, the media library, you know, some of the content things. You need to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so all of the maybe show category and tags. So here we have categories and tags, and you do not have that with pages. And what categories and tags are is, is a means of uh, hierarchically describing your data structures. So basically, when you blog, you want to blog about a category or multiple categories because that's going to help the internet find what your post content is actually about. And that's uh, so. So tags are sort of a subordinate um, attribute to, to categories. My example that I give is if fruit was a category, blueberry might be a tag. So blueberry is a very specific fruit, whereas fruit as a category describes all possible fruit. So uh, you know, Xander's going to have a category fruit, and then you know maybe we're blogging about blueberries that were in season at the end of fall last year, uh, and so he has to tag blueberries. Well, we talked about keywords in search engine optimization. Here you go. You are putting keywords into your website. You are helping outside of your content the internet figure out what your content is actually about. So you're giving them, you know, market. This was. I don't know what the game's called, but if this was Pirates, you might say, you know, Pirates level 42 or, you know, um, or you might talk about a bad guy in, in the game. You might talk about the monster or whatever, and then this post is specifically about that monster. You're going to attract comments about, you know, I say monster, they probably are monsters in the pirate game, but the big bad pirate guy or whatever, right, you know, or, or maybe it's a battle. Maybe this is a post about a battle. Um, you know, for a specific mission. Um, so this would be your opportunity to label that specific mission and then have some attributes, tags, of that mission. There were 52 votes or, you know. Uh, for, for my I have to do things that are not possible to do in Facebook because um, this game has all kinds of specific Facebook content everywhere. Okay. Right? Um, but, um, there's certain things that can be done in Facebook, so that's what I want to do. Okay. So, you know, we chose, uh, you know, a few, they added a few categories. It's not wrong to have multiple categories on a post. Just try to make sure that you're not just using the category to not, you know, you, you want your categories to actually describe the content. So you don't want to use every category. You don't want, you know, uh, if, if the category doesn't actually describe your content, then don't use that category. Use categories, add new categories for every new post if you want to, but don't miss these categories because you are helping search engines hone in on what your content is rather than just leading them to the fact that you have more categories. Um, so again, just kind of hierarchies, categories are, are higher up than tags. Tags are sort of descriptions of, uh, of, of the, the attributes of a category. So again, the example fruit, for a category, blueberries as a tag, apples can also be a tag, oranges, bananas, whatnot. Uh, these are features that you get uh, with WordPress.com. You also get these with the Jetpack plugin if you self-host WordPress. And that is a like button and a sharing button. The sharing button enables people to share your, your content on social media, so they're just uh, sharing buttons to share WordPress, Twitter, uh, Reddit, um, Instagram, maybe not Instagram, but there's there's seven seven providers. We'll, we'll get into that. Likes is an actual WordPress.com like button, and you can actually use that like button to track everything that you've liked on WordPress.com. So advanced features, you don't have to remember that. Just um, and bonus features that that 
are things that you know you can you can have people liking your, your blog content. You can go to other bloggers and like their content. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit later with extending. But then with WordPress.com, you have a variety of different um, display options for what your post looks like. Um, so I don't know exactly what all of these are in terms of how they style. I would probably leave them on standard for the most part. But you can try some other things. Video, uh, a quote is actually going to you know, make that whole blog post look like a, a quote. That's uh, probably the block quote tag. So people are, are logging into your site. You have an account for people on your site. Where is that? Or how, how can you see who's logged in? We'll get to that in just a second. They're not necessarily logging into your site. They might create an account to comment on your content. Okay, so, so they're, they're not actually content creators until you want them to be. Right. So where are commenters? Now? They're commenters. They're subscribers. They're commenters and subscribers, and that's that user level. So we'll talk about user levels in just a minute because if you want to do extend this site to having multiple bloggers, you know you can do that. If you wanted a site that had forums, um, you could do that. You couldn't really do that at WordPress.com, but it, you could use the software that, that's self-hosting it to do a forum system. So if you wanted to put WordPress on your own server. You could host the forum system. You could really make this more than a single person's blogging platform. You could really become a news agency. I mean, that's how robust the software actually is. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're going to use WordPress.com as our example, but we're starting to get into extending this off of WordPress's servers. And, and that is user levels. So we'll talk about user levels because we can, but. Um, uh, you know, some of this stuff is getting a little bit more advanced than what WordPress wants to let you do on their servers. I think, I think you know, uh, everybody's going to have different usages. So Nina, yours might be your business. Mark, you might be building a robust video game community. It may have multiple writers in the website. It may have, you know, um, more intelligence. Yeah. Uh, it, it may have, you know, a, a high level of uh, sophistication usage by, you know, many people. Uh, you're, you're actually building a community website in, in the sense that you host a, an online community, whereas you know, your business website might just be, you know, dynamic content to attract more people to your businesses and your business products and services. Um, so I want to cover what Mark's talking about. So if, we'll, if we can go under users. Uh, what does invite new mean? Um, because it's add new on, a, on another. Um, all right, so yeah, Mark, I'm not going to get to show you what the full potential of WordPress is unless I log into another website, which I can, I can do that. Um, okay. All right, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to users. We'll, we'll log into an actual self-hosted WordPress as opposed to WordPress.com. We'll start to cover some of those other advanced features and what they look like. Is there anything going on right No, no. That was just a place where you could invite new users. It looks like the, the full extent of what WordPress.com posted is going to give you is just subscribers. Just means people that follow your new blog posts. So that's all you're going to get at WordPress.com until you actually install your own WordPress on your own server. Um, and as far as like when people have to um, to register in order to comment, is that just registering with WordPress in general, or is that like with a particular? I, I that's a good question. Um, I want to say that uh, it's WordPress.com. Um, that if you're logged into WordPress.com, you could probably comment. Let's go back to that. No, so, you can't. You can't have every WordPress person all. 30 million of them be able to comment if on your side. Well, I think it's a setting is what I'm saying. Automatically an access to there, there's, there's new platforms emerging that are helping people use third-party systems like Discuss as comment moderation systems. Well, WordPress is in that same business, too. So WordPress wants to uh, let you uh, uh, basically track all your comments across WordPress as well. Xander, if you would go back to um, Let's go to the, the discussion again under settings discussion. We're going to go back to the comment stuff and see how this actually works. Um, scroll down the, what was it, the uh, users must be registered and logged in. 
Um, That's your side. Yeah. Your, word, your, your WordPress side, not for the entire you, you could turn that off. Maybe you want to turn that off so they don't have to register. They can just comment. The difference is you're going to get anonymous users commenting versus actually knowing who some of your commenters are. You could turn that off, and you could still have manual, you know, comment moderation. So if you turned off, you know, um, users must be logged in to register, but you left on comments must be manually approved, then people wouldn't have to register for your site. You can instantly comment, but you'd still have to approve their comments, and you could, of course, spam them, trash them, delete them. Um, no, not the person, but the, the comment. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that, that that comment must be manually approved was just in there. That's right. Uh, here we are in menus. This is a useful, useful, useful feature. Let's say you you know get three years into your website, you find that you have forty pages, and you you want to relay out your menu system. Well, this is a place where you can create a menu system for your website, select of only the the content that you want in your menu system. So Xander's going to create a menu system that's this called the overall menu. Is this individual? That's the overall menu menu, so you might call it like a horizontal main menu or something. Clicks create, and then he has the ability to choose what pages. He can also, if we had tons of posts, basically if we had tons of content, it would all be accessible right here. You could plug in posts. To your menu system, you can plug in categories to your menu system, you can plug in alternate links to other websites. So, you know, when you talk about backlinking back to your Google site, this would be a place to Xander if you would click links. Um, actually, did one more thing. If I can borrow the mouse real quick, see if I can figure out how to do this. Up here under screen options, if you can see at the top of the screen, I am just going to add link target. And then I'm going to reload this page, or just click Save Menu, reload this page. And what you will now see under links, oh, it's still not there. Let's go back to this. Just reload this. Um, I still don't know why it's not. Let's, let's try one. Let's just try. So we're adding Google to the, to the menu. And here we go. The reason I had to do that screen options and reload the page, I, I went to screen options and I, and I checked the link target box. And the point of doing that was so that my link, this to an external website, has this option right here, open link in the new window tab. So I add that, and now our website, um, actually, sorry, we have one more step to do before this menu will show up. But the point was, I, I wanted to demonstrate that, which was again screen options that are here, enabling the link in the new link target, and then basically what that enables it to do is open your Google site in a new tab while keeping the blog open, and, and that might be what you want to do. So that link target is just one of those sneaky hidden features. Uh, there's the checkbox to open link in a new tab when you've enabled it under screen options. You might want to take a note about that. And then, Xander, when you're done with this page and have saved, I want to go to customize where we're actually going to put this menu system on our website. You see Xander added a page, and there it is. If he clicks it, oh, you see the, the arrows, he can drag this page up or below the bottom, you know. He can actually make the blog a sub page in the menu system on Google or make Google a sub page of blog. Just like you did, pull to the right. Uh, no, not that far, just a little bit. You see how it's indented? So now it's a sub page of blog in the menu system. So that's how you can basically order your sub pages. You can have multi layers of sub pages. Your theme is going to dictate how uh, that menu system actually displays. And so we've covered pages, posts, we've covered media. Uh, this is menus. And uh, we're going to um, 
We're going to add the menu to our theme or customize, but then we're going to start playing with themes, and we'll have to do this add the menu to the theme a few times with every new theme that we try. Um, so, Xander, if you go to customize, right here under appearance, customize. This is going to be different for every single theme that you're working with for your website, but here's a number of things that we can customize about this particular theme. So we can customize probably the background color, if you put that. Um, oh, okay, so they want to sell you something, so that's what they've got there. Uh, but you can customize the site title. We can change that to something more meaningful. Uh, maybe in the Art Media Co-op or, or something, and then the tagline might be WordPress Workshop. And then we have this ability to add a logo to our website, which got one of the media library perfect. And keep scrolling. And then we have some colors and backgrounds, so we can, you know, hypothetically choose a different color palette. Uh, if we had a, a good banner side image, we could go ahead and here we go. This is navigation. This is the menu that we just set up. This is where we can choose different menus. And it looks like this particular theme supports a variety of locations for those menus. So we'll just see. This is going to be the primary horizontal menu, or uh, I guess we'll see where all these menus show up. Um, we'll talk about widgets in a minute, but go ahead and click Save and Publish, and let's see what we've got here. Can you get navigation down? Sorry. Yes. Uh, navigation, if, if you collapse some of these, this is in the cu Appearance Customize. Okay. This is the customized menu system. These are the things that we can customize. Under navigation, that was where you could choose the, uh, let's see, let go back to it from the main menu. So from the main menu, appearance, customize, and that takes you to this, which is a variety of options that once you change them, you will have to save to publish. But these are the variety of things you can you can change. Oh, and navigation so all of those here. Except navigation, so I have that. I still have navigation. Uh, I have all the those others. I'm you you might not have navigation either because you already chose a theme or right. I did. That's okay. okay. So different themes are going to have different functionality, and that's that's what Nina is experiencing. She chose a different theme than what we are working with here. And so it did not have the functionality to customize the navigation. Uh, if you try you know, a different theme, you'll find a different set of list of things here that, that you can do. Um, nonetheless, this is the customized menu. Most themes will support the navigation customization where you can assign a menu that you created. Um, this is that menu. This is what it is. So if he clicks it, that's the mobile responsiveness. You can see this particular theme is very mobile and responsive. It's got the menu items in 100% width, which is what's going to look great on this. You know, mobile friendly means that it's it's uh, it's really optimized for touch. And so having you know that menu item be the entire width of the screen for one item makes it very easy to touch and not miss touch. Um, so this is the from these settings, you can see how it's in. This is the mobile, this is the tablet version, a little bit smaller of a menu, and then the desktop version, which maybe change a little bit. It, it might if you had the customized menu out of here. Let's see how we can And there's the menu. So different themes are going to display different menus. I mean, yeah, click that. What is that? The, that just has the about page as a sub page. So that's a sub page in this particular theme. You know, different themes are going to display things totally differently. This is why there's, you know, a million designers making themes for WordPress. This is why there's, you know, probably 100,000 themes out there for you to choose from. Um, a lot will give you what you need right off the bat. Many will leave you feeling like you still need, you know, customization that you can't get until you start hacking the CSS, which we can cover. Uh, but that's a little bit more advanced. That's that's in the realm of web design more than just content management with the platform. So you do have those options. You have the ability to hack themes. 
themes are also covered by the open source licensing, so you have the right to completely hack the themes. A lot of people charge you premium, charge you money for premium themes, and you find that you still need to hack those themes anyways. We well, always have the right to hack a, a premium theme that you got for free. So if you got a theme that was the, the, the non-premium version, you could go to town hacking it and maybe getting it to do what you wanted anyway. So my point is, uh, you can always hack the if, if you if you have qualified you know skill sets or personnel that can help you, you can hack any of it legally. That is the beauty of open source. You have the right to hack the themes. You know, once it's installed on your server, you can start telling it how to display the way you want it to display. You have the right to do that. There's no you know, proprietary, anybody coming after you for modifying scripts or anything like that. Yeah, let's go to widgets. Are there any questions? Yeah, we'll probably go over the like 10, 15 minutes and then kind of go into a little more individual work uh, or if anybody wants to focus on something on the big screen. Sounds good. Uh, so widgets are, are this wonderful uh, Thing um, more or less. Is it only end of Yeah, there's two ways to get to it: appearance widgets or customized. So go ahead and click either one. It's easiest. Yeah, let's go back to dashboards. So. Widgets. Uh, so widgets are are basically um, function calls to various pieces of software or functionality that you have. And what that widget space is, websites tend to have sidebars, which, which is not your content, but maybe a sidebar to the left or right, where you might have something like quick links or another menu system or you know, a contact form or an email sign-up form or a PayPal donate button. Uh, so different themes have different widget-friendly spaces. Uh, and, and then there's all these widgets that you can plug into those widgets different these spaces or sidebars. So scroll up all the way, I want to see what, what we have in this theme. This is a lot of the stuff, not the widgets themselves, but what you have for uh, space to put your widgets in. Yeah, can you scroll all the way up? All the way up. That's what the theme, what we actually have. This over here is what you have. This is your sidebar. This is somewhere in the footer. This might be columns in the footer. Footer two, footer three. So those might be four columns in your footer, and then you might also have, so these, these areas are dictated by the theme. So it, it's your theme that, that determines what you have for places to put your widgets. So these are your available widgets, these are your available places to put widgets. Uh, different themes are going to have different different spaces for widgets, and these are the theme or sorry widgets that come with WordPress.com hosting. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, a good one if you're a blogger might be categories or a Facebook like box or a follow blog. That's obviously one that you want to do. Xander, you don't have to drag it, but that's one way you can deliver it. You could click on it as well. So you have that ability to either drag the widget into the space, which if it does that, here's what your widget options are for the follow blog. You can take that text out, and uh, you'll still have your button that says follow. So you can take up all of this text and make it a very simple follow button with just a follow. And that's going to enable people to sign up for any new blog post that you write. They will basically get to their inbox. So they put in their email address and all of a sudden they receive your new blog content to their inbox. That's what this particular widget is. It's a follow widget by WordPress. Where did they put their email? Uh, it'll be on the oh, front end of the website. I see. You're just okay. putting the function call into what this functionality is, and then on the front end this will show up, and, and once he saves one or two, we'll pull up the front end and you'll see what that actually looks like. Sure. Uh, you know, archives or categories is a good one. So, sure. And then there's also tag clouds too. Um, yeah, you might you, you might want to do categories and the tag cloud. Maybe that would be a good thing to do. So there, if you click it instead of dragging, you have the ability to choose which sidebar or which uh, widget area that you can put it into. And then you know you have some other options such as display this as a drop down instead of a list, show the number of posts 
uh, show the category hierarchies. So there's that. If we do tag cloud, uh, there would actually be a, here's a tag cloud. Does everybody know what a tag cloud is? Has everybody seen those? Um, tag clouds are uh, clouds, but they're they don't look like clouds. They're they're uh, all the tags that you use in your post. It's going to more or less make a graphical depiction of of the most used tags that you have used. And so if you've seen these, these word clouds on websites where one word's bigger, another word's smaller, another word's smaller, basically it's sizing the different tags you use by how the, the amount of usage you put into them. So if you've used the tag blueberries 15 times, then blueberries is going to be really big. Whereas if you use the category one resulting three times, it's going to be considerably smaller than blueberries. So we'll see this on the day. Hey, thank you, Amanda. This is this is um, this is infographics of tag clouds. This is what graphic designers do versus what the website does uh, to dynamically display that. But this is the thought here. These are different words associated with social media. Uh, hey, widgets, WordPress. So you know your tag clouds will be all. Beautifully designed like this, they'll look more like this up here, probably this one in the upper left. This is what your tag clouds are going to look like. Bigger words, smaller words. We don't have too many tags, so I don't expect it to be terribly functional. Um, but yeah, when we can load the site. Tags only go on posts again. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of things like this. Very quick, stick. And you saw that uh, the, the tags dynamically populated with tags you used before. So when we started typing blueberries, because we used that before, it popped up. Kind of a nice feature to have. Carrots, not food. What's that? Carrots, not food. <laughs> well, this post is actually about farmers markets, so it's both blueberries and carrots. <laughs> and now you see the follow, which if he clicks that should probably, I don't know, it might be because he's logged in, but, but there you see uh, Tech Cloud. I think um, it automatically made me follow since I'm already logged in. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll ask people for anything else there. So, because we've used the blueberries tag twice and these other two once, you can see the size difference between. So, that's what tag clouds do. They help people find your content on the basis of what your content is, you know, what tags you're primarily using. So, if you're reusing tags over and over, people are going to see those tags foremost, and then they're going to see the less reused tags in smaller fonts. Um, do we have any other widgets? Uh, down in the bottom, in the footer, here's the share this. Uh, there's a few other styling options for this, but here's some sharing options. We can we can, we can can configure this, and we'll get into that in a second. This still wasn't what I want to show you. You scroll all the way down, Xander. Uh, here is posted in many categories. That's at the footer, but, or that's at the bottom of the post. So keep scrolling down. Here's what comments look like. There's the place to put in comments. And then here is the... Uh, Actually, I thought you put a category. I thought you put a category in the footer. That could be the category widget that you put in. Is that the category widget? Oh, did I use the category? I thought you did. Sorry. Okay, maybe not. There it was. There's the categories widget in the footer, so that's what that widget looks like having the place in the footer. You can play with widgets, and, and we're just about to a point where we can turn this over so you guys can all have some time to actually play with this stuff. Uh, we can configure the sharing features. Um, before we move on to letting you guys uh, go to town with WordPress, I did want to cover some of the, the aspects of extending WordPress. Xander, if you go back into a post, There's a few ways to extend WordPress. We're going to do publicize right over here. 
Uh, we're going to have to go configure this, but I just wanted to show you this, what it looks like in, in a post. So we're going to go configure this to link our blog to our social media. So we're going to, you know, I don't know if we're actually logged into any service providers that we can link to, um, but basically we're going to go, uh, I wanted to show you this because if this was configured, this is a feature that would push your blog to your social media when you click publish. It's a little bit dangerous. It's a one-shot deal. When you, we don't see the word publish because we've already published this post. But if this was a brand new post and our, our publicized accounts were linked, uh, then you could click publish and it would publish a backlink to your blog post to all of your social media. Which the idea here is, is really vast, and that is using your social media to attract attention back to your blogs. So social media is great. We're not saying it's not as WordPressers. We're just saying the real contents on your website drive people from these social media networks back to your website, and this is, this is how you do it. So that's where the, the, the public size is. When it's connected, you will actually have uh, when it's connected, you will actually have the ability to customize the message that you put out there to social media. It's not the whole blog post; it's a backlink with maybe a sentence, "New blog post up at you know," and then you might write what the blog post title is or something like that. But let's configure that, and that's going to be under settings and sharing. This is a feature that you're going to see move around uh, when you self-host. Uh, basically, actually, it's always going to be under settings sharing. But this is a feature when you self-host that you have to install with a, another plugin called Jetpack. So, if anybody has any questions about self-hosting, um, you know, I can give you my contact information. We can talk about that. But for now, we'll stay focused on this. So here is the publicized app where you can connect your social media accounts. There's a limited number of social media you can connect, Facebook, Google, plus Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, and have. Um, basically, go ahead and click one of those connects. <coughs> That's, uh, no, these are, this is sharing, this is publicized. The top half publicized, the bottom half sharing. We'll cover sharing and like, bar, like buttons in a minute. This is publicized, so we'll just stay with, these are some of the things we can do to extend WordPress. So if we click this, it would basically ask you to be logged into Facebook and approve an app. You have to allow the app to do something, and that is connect your Facebook. And when you do this, if you have a fan page, it will let you choose your fan page or your profile, and you can set up multiple connections. So you could actually have it blast to your fan page while simultaneously blasting to your profile if you wanted to do that. So what happens if you click there? It's just going to ask you to be logged into Facebook. And there's there's the there's the app asking permission. Once you do, do this, it says uh, this does not let the app post to Facebook, but that's exactly what it does. So I'm not really sure why it said that. So there's your visibility. Who who would you like to see? Public friends, friends. So you're configuring the app for uh, Facebook. Um, so it doesn't give groups or names. Not on this button. What's custom? No, Xander, you're in privacy. You're not in. Um, go ahead and click OK. Let's see what happens. And then choose what you allow, manage your pages. It may be restricted on WordPress.com. I'm not real sure. I can do pages on self hosted WordPress. So click OK. Let's see what happens. I think it's got to go back to WordPress. Let's, let's just close Facebook and relaunch uh, the, the public site. Here you go. So now you can choose your pages. These are his pages. That's his profile. Um, you could make this publicized connection available to other bloggers. So let's say you have a community, you have a fan page, and uh, Xander, you're right, groups are not a part of this, but let's say you have a fan page for, for pirates or whatnot. You could basically have multiple bloggers. Any blogger, you could, through this, allow to publish to that, that, that fan page. So Xander's connected his profile. And basically, if we click publish on the blog post, that will post to his profile. Um, so that's publicized. It's a powerful feature of WordPress. It helps you take your blog content to social media. 
Uh, those are your service providers. If we scroll down, we're going to go to the next section, and this is sharing. This is kind of how you extend WordPress. So Xander, if you want to drag these services over here. I'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Everybody in my class. And obviously, you can uh, reorder these services in the box that he's dragging over to. What Xander's doing right now is dragging the services he wants to share. Yeah, I mean, these are already enabled, so. Um, these ones are Oh, okay. Share with which you know the share button you know hot you know so you you could have big buttons like these there's a live preview right here if you want to scroll down a little bit more you'll actually see and, and you have some configuration options you could you could change it to just the icon if you wanted to go ahead and change it to like just icon so people can see what the preview difference is so that's that's what the preview of his sharing mechanism is right now. Probably a good thing. Share on a new window so it doesn't navigate away from the website. I think it's the same window they probably have. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, you would want so yeah. So it would it would share on it, um, and then you can choose what what you know pages or posts or media that you want. Um, here's the ability to add your follow to Twitter, um, the WordPress likes that we talked about, uh, which help you track all the content that you've liked across WordPress. There's your ability to turn those on and off. Comment likes are on for all comments, so there's some like features. This is the sharing app under settings. This is probably the last thing we'll cover before we'll turn it over. Um, but yeah, those are some of the ways that you can extend WordPress so that it does do some of the heavy lifting of reaching your social media networks or reaching your users' social media networks. Does anybody have any questions before we start to uh, maybe get into what you guys want to do with web and what you guys might want to you know, find out on your own your play? Um, but you have any questions? Cool. I think uh, how we're going to move forward, and this makes sense, is um, people want to work on their own websites. Um, people obviously are, are free to go at any point. We've got the room for another hour. I'm going to start putting in um, on our own website uh, a plugin using. Um, to, to demonstrate what, what a self-hosted site, uh, some of the added capabilities of that. Um, we're going to make a little event calendar for ourselves. Uh, so you're welcome to, to just watch that. Um, and I can describe it. But, uh, but yeah, did anybody have specific things they wanted to work on? Yeah, good on you. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, I'm actually uh, trying to pull off what the, the, the template I used uh, is promising uh, as far as its capabilities, and it appears to be impossible. I have no uh, way to fathom uh, how to pull off what they promised, but this would be nice if I could do it. Okay. Uh, it is... Uh, Honestly, I'll let you. Okay. This. Um, well, you can stay there. We'll just walk through it together. I'm gonna turn off the hangout. And Xander, is that cool if I turn off the hangout? Yeah. Okay. Good.